Hello and welcome to Choose FI. Today on the show, we have my favorite episode of the year. This is the year end wins episode. So, this is where we make this truly a crowdsourced personal finance show. We ask you to send in the actions you've taken that have made your life better this year, 2023, with your personal finance, with every aspect of life. And we have a ton of voicemails we're going to play for you. And we have a special guest host today. So, co host, we'll say, Jonathan. Longtime host of Choose of I is back. I uh, I was able to convince him to come back for our favorite episode. So this is going to no, be. Oh, it didn't take that much convincing. <laughs> <laughs> it's about winning, lot, man. I want to win. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk a little bit about our wins. So anyway, with that, welcome to Choose of I. Jonathan, I was just kidding around. Obviously, it did not take any convincing. This is your favorite Zero. episode as well. Zero. Hey, dude, want to join me for year and wins? Yes. Short conversation. Yes, when? <laughs> Man, I thought I was going to get my intro to myself. It's an intro. <laughs> you don't interrupt the intro. That's why it's called the intro. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this should be fun. Can you believe this is the seventh annual episode of this, 2017 to 2023? We got like a solid streak going, you know, like I remember the good old days, like 2017, and I would see someone that was like founded in like 2015. And I was like, I mean, that was like six months ago. (laughs) So um, cool. But it's going to feel a lot better if it's like 50 years. Originally founded in 1952, (laughs) family owned company incorporated. Wow. Original. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And seven years ago, we did our first one. It's a big deal. And I really appreciate that you've kind of kept it going because I think it's a opportunity for us to get excited about other people's wins, which is really cool. And then use those as an opportunity to say, oh yeah, that happened in my life this year. Or, oh, that's a good idea for next year. Because we got New Year's resolutions coming up on the other side, right? Yeah, coming right, right around the corner. And yeah, you're exactly right. I think that's, that's why we do this, right? It's inspiration. It's celebration. And when you see someone else's story, you say, wow, that person did it. I can do it too. And I think that's why, Jonathan, I feature every, every Tuesday in the newsletter. I feature the wins people took just in the last week or two, right? This is obviously a, a culmination, a year-end wins, but it's that little bit of inspiration. And actually, to kind of celebrate year-end wins in the newsletter, what we're doing is on this episode, this is just going to be voicemails, because obviously I can't play voicemails in a newsletter, but people who wrote in their wins, I'm actually going to feature them starting tomorrow. So that's the 19th. And then next week's newsletter, December 26th. So if you are not on the newsletter, subscribe. Chooseup.com slash subscribe or literally any page on our website in the upper right-hand corner, there's a button that says Fi Weekly. So subscribe to this, subscribe for the inspiration, subscribe for the little nuggets of wisdom that I'm hopefully passing along every week. I think it's, it's really worth your time. So all right, Jonathan, let's get into it. This first voicemail comes in from Katie. Hey Brad, my name is Katie and I'm coming to you from Colorado Springs, Colorado, where my husband is stationed at the Air Force Academy. He is an Air Force officer and I am a former nurse. I now stay home with our son and manage our finances. When our son was born, the choice for me to stay home was not an easy one, but part of offsetting my loss in income was that I felt like I needed to educate myself about our finances and not only how to manage them and budget appropriately, but also how to invest, which was a really overwhelming concept to me. It took me years to kind of get to the point where we are today. And I'm always seeking to learn, which includes listening to your podcast. But some of our big wins for this year were that we finally opened a taxable brokerage account with Vanguard. We invested just shy of $70,000 in there. We were able to max out our Roth IRAs for maybe the fifth year in a row now, prioritizing that. We also, for the second year in a row, were finally able to max out my husband's TSP, which is the government's form of a 401k, and also save in our high-yield savings account. We save in a 529 for our son's college. We have a regular savings account and a high-yield savings account. And I just feel like this is the very first year where we've gotten to like check all the boxes. And for years, it was kind of just a pipe dream that we would be able to invest in all these different avenues. But this year was really the first one where we got to hit every single investing goal that we set for ourselves. And I definitely credit the Choose FI community with helping me learn how to do that and just feel confident in doing that. And we sponsor some cadets from the Air Force Academy who are just brand new in their military career. And we get to see them every weekend. And part of our conversations almost every weekend is about 
saving, investing, retirement, pension, you know, the military, TSP, all of that. So I feel like I'm now at a point where I'm able to pass on some of that knowledge to kids who are just starting out in their financial journey and their careers and help them make better choices than we were able to make because they have more knowledge than we had when we were at their age. So I just appreciate this community so much. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for the entire community and what they uh, bring to the table. But yeah, thank you. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Wow. Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year to you. And what, that's exactly what I was thinking is how many more boxes are there to check? <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> Every single box. That is amazing. I was thinking, are we going to do the triple? Oh, wait, wait, wait. They just blew by that. They're on four, five, six. Well, they're like seven boxes. Yeah. One yeah. year. <laughs> First year we've checked all the boxes. That's amazing. And uh, Jonathan, I love the the paying it forward, right? They're paying it forward to this next generation of Air Force cadets in this case, and trying to teach them. I mean, could you imagine being 18, 19, 20 years old at the Air Force Academy and knowing you're coming out with an officer's salary and all these amazing benefits you get and having, as you would say, the ground game all set? Like it's, it's just remarkable. It's amazing. There's some friction to setting up those accounts. You know, I found yeah. myself looking at the 529 page again, like the eight or ninth time, just being like, I should really set this up. I should really do this. And you just, you don't for whatever reason, which is why a couple months later, I'm going to be looking at that screen again. What do these words mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, there is friction. And, and yeah, that's but why if you can get it done. But if you can get it done, you take it off. It comes off that things of that are just hanging over you like this dark cloud of unknowns. And you can just like lay the pipe and then benefit from it. You know, put it on autopilot. One less decision that you need to make. And that's done. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Jonathan, let's uh, queue up the next one here. So this one actually came from a prior guest of ours. So that's Rakesh from episode 436. But interesting story. This was sent in by his son, Yurav, who we actually spoke to in episode way back in episode 305. This was a seven-year-old who wants to invest. And we spoke directly to him. And he's not seven anymore. He's 10. And he sent in this year-end wins for their family. I'm excited. Let's do it. Hi, this is Yurav. I am reading end of the year win for my dad, Rakesh. This year has been great in terms of investing. We were able to fill all our buckets like 401k, Roth, HSA as planned at the beginning of the year. The greatest achievement has been meeting some of the five friends in person and talking to them at five events like Camp Fi and Fin Talks with Amberly Grant. It gives the assurance that you are not walking alone on the path less traveled. I'm looking forward to 2024 and meet more Fi community members. I love that. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about another life skill is learning how to speak publicly, right? Not for nothing, but he just sent a voicemail in that's going to be heard by many, many, many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. And that's just another cool thing to add to that talent stack. So you're of amazing. And uh, Rakesh and your entire family, congratulations. And thank you for being such an active part of our community. My kids routinely look for opportunities to grab my mic from me, but then they just want to sing Frozen. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a start. Just start. Get, get comfortable <laughs> with that microphone. Uh, very cool. Really phenomenal news. And excited just to see like how integrated Yurav is into like everything that his dad is interested in in this case. It's, right. it's exciting to think about second generation of financial independence. Yep. Absolutely love it. And for anybody out there who's looking to talk to your kids about investing, go back to that episode 305 of Choose a Buy. We talk directly to, to a child in this case, to a kid who's interested. And I think it'll resonate. So check that one out. All right, Jonathan, next voicemail came in from Stephanie. Hey, Brad, this is Stephanie, and I just love Choose huh. FI. I always look forward to the new recording every week, and I put it on my podcast and get my steps in and walk around my neighborhood. But there were a few key areas this year that I was so excited about the growth that I saw. One of them was that just in the physical realm, just that more movement, I adopted a Mediterranean diet. I improved my blood work, which my doctor was super happy about. I started playing pickleball and I've never laughed so hard playing a sport before and getting great exercise. Another one was jobs. My husband and I, we realized we're in our 50s now. And after listening to all of these episodes that we finally get to do things that we like to do. So this year he ended up joining a ministry and working for a ministry. And I actually serve wine. <laughs> so I consider myself 
wine fi if that's a thing uh the other one was a spiritual growth i joined a couple bible studies i volunteered as a greeter at my church and a family growth area was that we gave a vacation as our christmas present last year and so we went on a really fun vacation and we were fishing and hiking and hot tubbing and reading and um, just exploring the area and that was a really fun thing to do instead of gifts and presents traditionally that we would have done. And the last one, of course, financial. Our net worth grew within a year of $123,000. And that was through just savings, investment, and real estate income and appreciation. So thank you so much for letting us celebrate the wins. And I look forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Hope you have a very, very blessed new year. Thank you. Wow. You know, that sounds to me like a life by design. And it sounds like it's not a debt snowball. It's a wealth snowball. And the (laughs) momentum is working for you. This is fantastic. Yeah. Wealth snowball, health snowball, everything, right? Like she talked at the beginning about about walking, more movement. And then, oh, wow, you're in your 50s, which is, is quite young at this point. But for many people, they start to feel like they're declining in their own brains, right? But you start moving more. You start feeling good. You start playing pickleball. You start seeing your friends more often and laughing and right doing all these things we like to do. Oh, she was using a lot of buzzwords that I know were just like, ooh, hot tub. (laughs) I was like, oh, Brad just perked up. Yeah, speaking (laughs) of my soul there, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Giving experiences as a present as opposed to just things. I mean, goodness, that checked all the boxes. So we're we're checking all the boxes here with these voicemails so far. I love it. All right, Jonathan. So the next one we're going to play is from Brian. Hi, Brad. It's Brian. I'm calling from Alameda, California. I'm 47 years old. I have a wife of 20 years and 12-year-old son. I'm calling in with my 2023 wins. This year, I'm happy to share that I reached Coast Phi, or Fat Phi, or some combination of those two Phi's. Basically, I need six months per year of work and then otherwise can live off my savings. But my win isn't just that. It's the fact that I actually did it. This year, I stopped working full time. I guess you could call it my bold move for 2023. I left work in May, spent all of June in Portugal with my family, and I followed it up with two months at our cabin in northern Wisconsin, all while not working, which is very strange for me. I spent the next three months launching my part-time post-five business, where I coach others like me who are interested in living in a semi-retired lifestyle in their 40s and 50s using independent consulting as a secret weapon. It's pretty niche. I call it becoming a choosy consultant. I like it. I'm enjoying more time with my family while continuing to work on important projects, rekindle old friendships, and take care of myself. I lost 20 pounds and I'm a lot stronger now. I have a new daily rucking habit. So what does next year look like for me? My goal is centered on my son. He's incredible. A master salesman and negotiator. He even sold our car when he was eight years old. Super creative, hyper-focused, but his ADHD keeps him in the present. It's all about the here and now with him. So translated, he's a huge spender. His birthday money just burns holes in his pockets. So my wife and I are cut from the Choose FI cloth. So figuring out how to teach him about money has been very humbling, to say the least. We've tried so many tactics over the years. I'm sure you've heard of the three jars method. Yeah, that was a complete failure. In 2024, we're going to try to rise above the tactics. I'm learning more about money scripts and that has helped a lot. Is it bad to spend your money? No, of course it's not. But I've only recently embraced this after reading Die With Zero and hearing about you and Taylor Swift (laughs) and the concerts. Anyway, it's a start. I have lots more to do and learn in 2024. But thanks for all the great information and keep it up. Happy holidays. Wow. Wow. There is a lot in there. He lost 20 pounds. I think I found him. Is there a finder's fee? I think I think I may have found this, but this is an there's so much in here. I don't even know where to begin. Definitely deserves a follow-up conversation. Very curious yeah. about like, you know, all the things that he's gotten into here. And I can certainly empathize with, you know, the challenges that he's facing as he's trying to pass these lessons on to his son. He realizes the benefit they've been to him. And there's so much potential there if we can just direct that. But how? How do you make that connection? So you could spend 20 minutes on any one of these points that he just talked about. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Brian, an amazing year, right? From actually doing it to taking the trip to Portugal to, like you said, Jonathan, it's, yeah, we can try to teach our kids about this, but I think we need to be very mindful of not ramming it down their throats or ramming it down anybody's throats, frankly, right? So I think how I try to do this is just piece by piece, meet them where they are, 
talk about personal finance, talk about money and make it a part of daily life, make it a part of, of regular life and not something taboo. And I think for me, that's the best way to start. So for anybody out there looking, just talk to your kids, but meet them where they are. And I know, Jonathan, I've talked over the last year and change about a lot of the, the roller coasters that I've uh, taken my daughter Anna to and, and how I've built lessons in on some of the publicly traded companies that are in the amusement yeah. park world. And like, that's exciting to her owning a little piece of Cedar Fair or Six Flags, like that's exciting to her as opposed to like me giving some lesson on Tesla or Amazon or whatever. And so again, it's meeting her where she is. So Brian, well done. And you're certainly- Wait, no, do we have to go all right, right yet? All right. I feel like, you know, whenever we've done like seven of these total and I think Brad, I've done four or five, maybe six of them with you. And I feel like whenever we do, there's always this balance between play as many of these <laughs> as we can. They sent them in. They're amazing. We got to share them. And Brad, we got to talk about yeah, these. I know, this is so much here. <laughs> all right. I will move on, Brian. Well done, sir. Well done. And do you just feel like maybe we're missing something? Like, why is everybody going to Portugal? What's in Portugal? Yeah, Portugal is supposed to be incredible. That's definitely on my short list of places to travel. It's come up a lot, like a, a beyond a coincidence, Portugal, Portugal. Portugal. <laughs> All right. You know, more my voice last mails. name. More voice mails. <laughs> 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 All right, go. All right, Jonathan. So this comes in from Boyd Dunleavy, who was a guest on episode 394, which was from blood cancer to the Boston Marathon. And he just has an incredible story. Hey, guys. It's Boyd Dunleavy in Canada. So our big FI win this year was an unexpected event in April. A reckless driver came through a side street and took off the front of our car and nearly killed me. But miraculously, I walked away from the car crash. But more importantly than that, because we were able to pay our house off two years ago and you know we're sort of 75 or 80% of the way to financial independence, um, we had to get a new vehicle because we didn't have a lot of time and we're still the process of negotiation with the insurance company for final settlement. But because we had everything in order, we were able to buy the car that we needed without having to worry about going to the bank for a loan or any of that other stuff. So again, I'm thrilled to still be alive. As you know, Brad, I'm a two-time leukemia survivor and everything else. So walking away from a car crash in April was a big thing. But because we had our financial house in order, it didn't financially cripple us. So that's my message and wanting to wish everybody a happy new year. And thank you for all the hard work you do. I can empathize with that script. Do you know the path that I've walked is going to be a car crash that takes me out? Yeah. Seriously, Boyd is incredible. Two-time leukemia survivor. And and yeah, the message that he just said there at the end, because we had our financial house in order, dot, 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 right? And then obviously every person out there listening to this can fill that dot, dot, dot in with whatever it is in your life, because it's going to be something, right, Jonathan? I mean, no matter what, things arise. Obviously, we hope they're not calamitous like a, a near-death car experience, but could just be something as simple as, hey, my HVAC went out and it's a $5,000 expense. That's not a calamity for people in the financial independence community because we have our financial house in order. Is it a little annoyance? Yeah, but it's but a blip. And I think that's, that's the most remarkable thing. Okay, Jonathan, the next one comes in actually all the way from Japan. Hi, Brad. This is Kaori from Tokyo, Japan. I'm 29 years old. And this year, I've achieved my course fire slash side fire number and recently left my company. And I was working for this company and I wanted to leave because it was a really toxic work environment. And that time I found your podcast and learned about FI and got really inspired. So um, in terms of taking an action, I bought low-cost index fund that was available in Japan, and I kept investing about five thousand US dollars every month, and only lived with my husband's income for several years. And this year, I finally did my work, and that's all thanks to you. Thank you, Brad, for all of the motivating talk on your podcast, and you really made me going. And please let me know if you visit Japan. Brad, I think that is would not be out of the realm of possibility. If I remember correctly, Japan was a place that holds a great affection in your heart. It holds a very, very special place in my heart. And yeah, I studied abroad there summer after my freshman year of college. And like I've told you, I've been trying to learn Japanese on the side. I've actually got a little more serious about it recently because hopefully 2024 is the year. I've said a lot oh. recently that Climbing Mount Fuji is one of my, maybe the number one life goal that I have in the near term. So uh, yeah, we might be, uh, I might be reaching out. So amazing voicemail. I mean, just also to reach Coast Fi, to leave your job in a culture where that maybe is even less normal than here in America. So 
it's extraordinary. And thank you for being a part of our community. It's amazing to hear it from so many thousands of miles away that, Jonathan, this message resonates. You know, as a group of people, we are weird. We are <laughs> kind of, you know, outside the norm, outside the normal standard societal script. I mean, we don't think so. But like, you know, in terms of what the average choice is compared to the collective choices this group's made, we're, we're weird. You know, that's just how it works. Weird is great. I'm perfectly <laughs> comfortable being weird. Now, to see, though, that the message when communicated the right way consistently over time by this crowdsourced community, it, it crosses country boundaries. Yeah. It crosses any sort of, you know, differences in culture. It's a universal truth that when you see it, time is your most precious resource. It is what you're running out of. What you do with the money is a tool to reclaim your time. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about how much you're saving each month or how much you make or how much you spend or whatever. It's a mechanism to reclaim your most precious resource, your time. It doesn't matter what country you're in. If communicated properly, that's a universal truth. It is true. Here, here. There's no question about it. I mean, we've said this so many times. Phi is a superpower. And to me, it is a universal good. And like you're saying, it is a universal truth. And that's why this community is so powerful because we're pursuing something that has resonance, that is true, that we know in our bones is what we aspire to. We aspire to freedom and autonomy. And that's why we're doing this. It's remarkable. So thank you for calling in. All right, Jonathan, the next voicemail comes from Anthony. Hi, Brad. I wanted to share my win, not only because I am proud of my wife for it, but also to let the listeners know that with a little hard work and maybe a little sacrifice, you can do anything you set your heart to. Over the course of 11 years, my wife worked her way up from a secretary making $9 an hour to the executive director of the same company, earning over $60,000 a year. While this might sound like the end of the story for my year-end win, it's actually just the beginning. See, over those 11 years, my wife experienced tremendous burnout, and in July 2022, she left her job to pursue a master's degree in education with the dream of becoming an elementary teacher. She took a teacher's aid position, making a tiny income, and worked her butt off at night completing her college work after our two young daughters were sleeping. We managed to cash flow her entire master's degree with her teacher's aid job and my teaching career. Fast forward just over a year to August 2023, the month my wife not only completed her debt-free master's degree, but also began her dream job as a kindergarten teacher. To add metaphorical icing on the cake, her job is at the same school where I have been teaching for 12 years and where our kids both attend. Now, as an entire family, we are on the exact same schedule. Although we are making slightly less than we would have if she had stayed, it balances out with her access to a 457 plan, pension, and of course, her general happiness. I've been listening to Choose FI for years, and your podcast has truly helped shape the way my life looks today. Thank you so much, Anthony. Did you just hear 457, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did indeed. That's a box you don't have access to. I do not have access to that, no. Got to get millionaire educator. Actually, I've had a couple of people ask me for that. But man, Jonathan, a voicemail like this, some of these just hit me. You know, we've been doing this a long time. Obviously, you know how hard this is and week in, week out to produce a podcast. And, you know, sometimes you just realize what a difference it's making. And it's uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's hard to believe. And this has transformed their family. I mean, just obviously, Anthony's wife deserves all the credit for taking the action. But goodness, what a story. Yeah. I got to say, I mean, I, I think this community gets it, but they, they, I hope they appreciate just what an act of service it is for you to just keep doing this every week. You know, when I took that step back, there was a, you know, a, a fork in that road there. Like, are you going to, it's a lot of work for two people. If one person is, is, you know, continuing to create this content and what's your why? And, and it's not the Brad story or the Brad show. That's not enough of a why to put this level of work in when you're already financially independent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I think this episode has a particularly, you have a very soft place in your heart for this episode because it is a confirmation of the fact that this means something. This community, this message, it means something. It's changing lives. It's changing not just the individual's lives, but you know the people that they're responsible for, that they provide for, the next generation. 
And, you know, we're only able in our little amount of time, if Jonathan talks just a little bit less to squeeze <laughs> in 10 or 12 voicemails or whatever in an hour. But that's a representative of hundreds of thousands of people who have been able to take these choices over the years. I mean, I was thinking I was looking at something like 65 million downloads since, you know, this podcast started just a few years ago. I mean, that's a, just, just an insane number when you think, yeah, forget forget the 25 boxes, the single action that was taken, the single action that was slotted in that they don't have to think about anymore. It's just, it's very cool, man. It's very cool to think about. And I just, I just, all that to say, thank you, man. You know, it's a season of gratitude and you keeping this show going and really just taking it to a whole nother level has really been a gift to all of us. And we're thankful for you. Ah, thank you, Jonathan. I, I really appreciate it. And yeah, this is truly my, our life's work. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something really special. So I just, I love doing this episode. So all right, let's get back to the voicemails here. So we got uh, one, I think it's pretty timely here, from Donna. Hi, Brad. My name is Donna McGovern from Queens, New York. And I don't know where to begin, but I'll keep it short for the five minutes. So many wins this year. It's the day before Thanksgiving. And my mom passed away October 28th from a year and a half with pancreatic cancer. But that journey alone, will talk about a win with so much peace and faith and just like even being able to have amazing conversations was a huge win. My mom passed away with such peace and so much joy that it is something that we can't even describe with a lot of miracles in between. That's one. Another amazing win was we've been following and listening to the show for about two years now. And the amount of wealth of information that I have put into my life and has made a huge difference. Just to be able to pay for my mom's funeral and knowing that when I pay, I have the money to pay for it because I've been consistent with following up on automatic and putting money away. And I'm 59 years old and no kids, never been married by choice. And I'm really grateful that I have that kind of financial security. I'm not uh, independently, you know, yet where I'm a, like the true fire financial independence, but I'm on my way and doing really well. And the third one is, of the many, 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 is that I'm able to help support emotionally and sometimes financially my aunts, one who's 94 with dementia and the other one who's 80 with scoliosis, and supporting my aunt to rebuild her home in Puerto Rico that she lost her home in the hurricane eight years ago. So again, there's just so many different wins, and I'm grateful for the show because not only do I learn a lot, expand my knowledge, expand my spiritual practices through a lot of your shows. And just even you always sharing about with your wife and your kids and where you're willing to go with yourself really supports me and all the different kind of people that you have on your show. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, there's so many other wins, but those are really the biggest highlights right now on this Thanksgiving week. Have a great holiday. Donna, thank you so much for sending in. That is fantastic. You know, I was thinking about this recently as I was signing up for You Need a Budget, YNAB. If you don't know what that is, you can find out more at chooseify.com slash YNAB. But it's a simple budgeting tool that we talk about. But the thing is, you have money in your bank account, but how much is actually free? How much doesn't already have a name to it? Because everything should have a name. The name just might be savings. But what you have in your bank account doesn't necessarily reflect what you have access to if you have variable income, if you're self-employed, if you have complex expenses. You just don't know the peace of mind of knowing that the number that you see there, forget what your bank account actually says, what you have actually available in terms of handling disasters, if they strike, handling unexpected events, handling, you know, whatever, being able to put that together, it, it can give you a, a peace of mind. And so as I was renewing my thing each year, because there's a, there's a small cost to that. And I was just thinking for me, I find that very, very useful. I find it really, really good to just know, here's my actual state. And because of that, when things happen, when Murphy hits on the door, when a crisis strikes, whatever, here's the margin that I have. And it gives me just a little more wiggle room in terms of, do I need to tap into investments? Is this outside of that? Or we're good. I find that as I get older, I like to have a larger buffer than I did when I was I remember when I was, I remember when, I remember someone's like 80 <laughs> right now and they're looking at their 60 year old. I remember when I was 60 and I was a young whippers. I remember when I was in my late twenties in my early twenties and my teens, I could have five bucks in my bank account and feel fine. Like, yeah, it's good. You know, two weeks till next paycheck. Yeah, we're going to make it worse. No big deal. Uh, it needs to be a little bit more now. Like I need a lot of buffer in my life 
you know, in order to feel, you know, more resilient. And it's just interesting to kind of think about one, that psychology shift as you get older, but then also the tools that you use to manage that. And the cool thing is, as you've been on this path longer, your, your financial life does get more complex, but you also are more educated and you have more tools to manage that and allow you to handle everything in a more robust and resilient way. That just scratches the surface of all everything Donna shared with us, but it did strike me at a personal level because I was making that choice recently. Yeah, no, I hear you. And Donna, thank you for calling in. It's amazing how much support you're able to provide to your family. And because of this path to FI, you're in a financial position where where you can do that. And like you said, consistent with automated investments and, and just plugging away with this, just plugging away at this. So yeah, thank you again. All right, Jonathan, got a couple more here. We got some a uh, couple longer voicemails to finish up the episode. All right, this one came in from Brian. Hey, Brad and Jonathan. First time, thank you all for everything y'all are doing. Y'all are literally changing lives. I found you back in May of 2020. And like you've said in a recent podcast, it truly is a superpower to know everything that y'all teach here on Choose FI and the personal finance world. I just want to shout out to the big wins of this year. Going back to that May of 2020, our net worth was just under 200K. And most of that was the house. Since then, our mortgage is paid off. Our net worth is just shy of a million dollars. This past year, I took a 10-month sabbatical from my work. I just told them, hey, this is what I'm doing. My daughter, she's now 14 months, but I want to spend an extraordinary amount of time with her. And it just took a 10 month sabbatical and was able to do that because of the strategic moves in place that I've learned here on Choose FI. And so I've been able to take uh, vacations more so than I have in previous years. Like I said, our net worth is just under $1 million. Other wins would be uh, my wife got a new job that's 100% remote, that is less strenuous and gets paid more than her previous job. And she was a big four accountant, which Brad, you know how that goes. And now she's in a less strenuous job that pays more and had a sign on bonus. And these are moves that we now feel comfortable doing in our lives and making the decisions we've made solely based on this podcast and the resources this podcast puts out. Since 2020, My personal knowledge and personal finance has grown so much. I've read 25 plus books and it just, there's a connection between each book and each podcast that you listen to and everyone speaking the same thing. It was either get on board with it or not do the same thing I was doing or change. And this podcast, I can't, I can't say it enough that it's changing lives being able to take the sabbatical this year and de-plug and connect with my family it just speaks volumes and it's life changing. And it's something I'll look back on living in the now spending for now, you know, not, not deprivation, not as y'all say, bruise bananas or nobody's doing anything like that. This is about spending what you really value on. And time is truly your most precious, non-renewable resource. You, got it. <laughs> and, <laughs> now, you guys can put out the same podcast, saying these same words over and over again. And I think you'd still be highly successful because that's how much the world needs it. And um, I try to spread what I've learned to people. And um, it's just it's shocking how much how much people really don't know. I, I was one of them who just totally clueless. So, again, thank you all so much. Just want to share those wins and keep up the good work and look forward to uh, everyone you bring on the show. Uh, Jonathan, hopefully making some more surprise appearances. I love the rants he does. And Brad, <laughs> keep up everything you do. <laughs> Brian, Brian, you're teeing me up, brother. There's a rant <laughs> incoming right now. You know it. You know, as he was talking, Brad, I was just thinking about this stuff. There, there are better options out there. Whatever you, th- like as a parent with your kids, you give them the false choice all the time. Do you want to stay up for five more minutes or do you want me to read you a book before bed, right? This is how we think as adults. It happens to us all the time. Yes, I hope my kids don't pick up on this. Maybe they won't listen to this episode. That's not the only two options. Well, I want both, dad. You know, like, like can I have five more minutes and a book? You know, as an adult, you have the right to just, but you have to have time to process that and think about it. And that idea might not hit you unless it's injected into your brain. I was listening 
to a conversation recently. I say listening, eavesdropping is a better word. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> but okay. You know, I have some sympathy here as I'm saying this. The, the fellow is a little bit older and he was kind of relaying a series of somewhat unfortunate events about how he was in one path. He was good at this, but he should have taken action on it, but he didn't. He ended up in this career path. Something happened and he happened to step out and he had an extended absence outside of that. And then his skills were obsolete. He couldn't explain his time out and he just ended up in whatever he is now. And that is his script. And that certainly does account for where he is. It's a completely false choice. You know, it's a completely false script. It's true for him. It's what he lived. It doesn't have to be true for you. You can choose to take 10 months off. And when you go offensive with it, you're going to have people begging you to come back through the lens of skills, not because you think you're an awesome person, but through the lens of the interest led learning that allowed you to crew a skill stack that is useful in any industry. And you took 10 months to forge this and oh, here's what I've done. You can get back in anytime. I was at another event the other day where someone was telling me how, you know, oh, well, you know, the real thing you did, you could go get a job. Well, yeah, I could. <laughs> of course I could go get a job. You know, you can get back into the industry, any, but as long as you believe that this person did not believe that right in any way at any point. And with head down, he went through the submissions process and got the result he expected that matched up with the script. We don't have that script. And why do we not have it? Because we're confronted daily with thousands of people that have made choices from a more difficult place than we made it and gotten these unusual but spectacular results. Right. And through that, our script changes. Well, right. That script is really about choosing to have an empowering mindset, right? And believing that you can affect change on your life. And Brian certainly did, right? He said, I could do the same thing I was doing or I could change. And frankly, a lot of people keep on doing the same thing they were doing. But Brian decided to change. He decided to read 25 plus books and listen to a ton of podcasts and synthesize all that info until it was part of him. He decided to make a massive change and take a 10-month sabbatical to spend time with his one-year-old daughter. These are remarkable things, but we can do them when we set our mind to it, right, Jonathan? I mean, that it's as simple as that. It's about taking action. That is the secret sauce behind Choose FI and the entire financial independence movement as we characterize it. It is about getting up off the couch and taking action to make your life better. Simple, hard stop, end of story. One story sponsoring our story, but I'm going to resist. Let's move <laughs> forward. Next voicemail. All right, Jonathan, this next one comes in from Paul. Hey, Brad. Love your newsletter. I wanted to share my year-end wins with you. Before I do, I wanted to remind you who I am. My name is Paul. I'm actually Paul from the case study that you and Jonathan did with me over six years 24. ago now. I'm, going to episode 24. I'm still listening, but this is my first opportunity to catch up with you since the case study. I did ultimately pull the plug at the end of 2018 and have been fire ever since. So let's get to my year-end wins for 2023. I got several categories. First is travel. I earned the Southwest Companion Pass in February of 2022, and we leveraged it to the hilt this year before it expires at the end of the year. My wife accompanied me to places for just taxes and fees like Dallas, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, Aruba, and the trip that we just completed three weeks in Hawaii. And most of my fares were on points, so we really racked up the freebies there. Let's move on to healthcare. At ages 56 and 49, we scored a plan on the marketplace for 2023 with a monthly premium after tax credits of $203. No deductible and very low cost shares. Next year looks to be very similar. As far as our home goes, we saved $500 by paying cash for our siding on our house. And that was a savings of approximately 8%. Education. This isn't really for me, but I thought this was great. Our 20-year-old daughter, 20, finished her BS degree in nursing with zero student loan debt, is working full-time as an RN, and has started her doctorate program to become a nurse practitioner. Yes, I did say she's just 20 years old. <laughs> you That's don't just have awesome. to wait. You can just Let's do move it. to work. <laughs> Even though we fired at the end of 2018, well, my wife worked another year, I had picked up some contract work 
I teach classes for American Management Association, and I'm paid $500 a day, plus travel in per diem if the class is in person. That's led to a nice $21,000 of income for this year. The best part is that I can pick and choose to take the classes that are offered to me. So if it doesn't fit my schedule, or I don't want to travel to a particular city, I simply decline. When I do travel, my wife often goes with me again because of the companion pass. It's been a great addition to keep me busy, to slow the spending from our taxable accounts, and to give us a few getaways that we might not otherwise choose. Now let's go to financial. Our portfolio has grown nicely this year, up just over 16%. From the time that I fired until now, which has been just about five years, our portfolio has grown just over a million dollars from where we started. (laughs) Not too bad for sticking with index funds and living well below the 4% rule. In a year and a half, I'll be able to access my retirement portfolio, and in four years, I'll be eligible to start Social Security. And lastly, on the personal side, this year, we had our first grandbaby. Of course, I had nothing to do with that, but we're just blessed. <laughs> you can still get some credit. <laughs> Again, thanks for this opportunity. Thank you for the great show, and thanks for all you do to the community. Man, I remembered him within just like a few minutes. As soon as he, I was like, oh. And I was close on the episode, too. You were real close. I wish I were on it. Yeah, 20R was the very first one. And there were there were a couple right around there. So it was like April of 2017, Jonathan, which is crazy. We did it 21R, 23R, 25R, chooseify.com slash yeah. 0 And 26R, too. <laughs> yeah, he, he came on like three or four times. And we would just go back and forth. It was, it was really, really cool. He was a good sport about it and gave us all of his numbers, gave us a lot to work with. And man, it sounds like it's worked out very, very well for him. And uh, Brad, I don't know how, I mean, how many episodes now? Like 500, 600, like there's a lot yeah, of episodes. Between us. All right. So how come it really just took me to now to process that you say to someone just casually, no, no, I fired. You got fired. No, I fired. <laughs> I fired my job. <laughs> I fired. <laughs> it took you that long to see that? It was teed up for you the entire time. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> How many thousands of hours have you thought about this stuff? It took you until then. That's it great. just hit me. It's like a missed opportunity. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Paul, so good to hear from you. Thank you for calling in and congrats on everything. All right, Jonathan, we have one last voicemail, and this came in from Sabrina. Hi, Brad. My name is Sabrina. As I sit here in my new home drinking coffee on a Saturday morning, I thought it was finally time to tell you about how much Chooseify has impacted my life and changed it forever. And to let you know about how grateful I am for that. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. As a kid, I was an only child of a single mom and we were on and off welfare and homeless twice and thankfully had some support from some people at that time and always on the edge of financial disaster. As a kid, this made a big impact on me and I wanted to do better. So I went to school and more school and more school and ended up with a PhD in epidemiology, which people used to never know what that was. And when I was 40, I had decided to separate from my husband and become a single parent. So at that same time, concurrently looking into financial stability and how to do that on my own after having gone through lots of school and having student loan debt and ending up in a toxic work environment too. So I was in quite quite a state when I found Chooseify. My kids and I were living in a little two-bedroom apartment right down the street actually from the house that I lived in with their dad. And we would shuttle the kids back and forth along the same street. And in January of 2020, I found Chooseify and started making changes and am basically the poster child of the aggregation of marginal gains that you all always talk about and finding small ways to do 1% better every day. So, you know, initially I started with changing what my retirement investments were. And then I started increasing my allocations. And then I looked into uh, 457B, which I haven't heard people talk about this, but as somebody who doesn't have financial security of parents to fall back on and didn't have a built up emergency fund, I used the 457B as an emergency fund. If I lost my job, then that money would become available to me. So it served as sort of retirement compensation package 
situation, but also emergency fund if I were to lose my job. I also I have a, a number of these written down, but some of the highlights are from the things that hit me the most were the Coach Carson episode. I think it was like 16 or something from early on. And it kind of blew me away that you could write to somebody and ask to buy their house. And I work with data and know that there are plots of land available and you can look and see in the town registries that if the address of the owners doesn't match the address of the land, they don't live there. So it's a rental property or it's abandoned or whatever. And so as I was walking around town during the pandemic, when people were just out walking, I noticed a few houses that I put on my my list and looked them up and wrote to two of the owners of a house. And that's how I ended up buying a an abandoned house that needed a lot of renovation and work. But after having spent a year and a half house hunting during the pandemic, when housing costs were super high, that was the only way I could get a house. And I ended up buying a house, renovating it and house hacking. Now I have an Airbnb in my basement apartment or garden apartment. Pardon me. So marketing is all that matters here. I also, because of increasing savings, was able to negotiate for better pay because I had the ability to walk away. I found this magical mortgage situation during the low mortgage rate time, been able to use points and miles. And that urgent student loan episode ended up with student loan relief for me just in April of this year. There's so many more things, but I think that's as much as I can fit in my five minutes. Thank you again. Wow, Brad. There's a reason we're listening to hers right now, isn't it? <laughs> That's got the feels, man. Yeah. I'm um mm. <laughs> get opportunities to make sure all your emotions are still intact. Yep, we're good. <laughs> yep, check, check, and goosebumps check. Yes. Uh Sabrina, that is remarkable. Right, Jay? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm speechless. I'm, I'm, you know how rarely I'm speechless. So I'm just <laughs> yeah, watching the words that are falling out of my mouth, trying to get to the right ones because this is just mind blowing that you can do that. The aggregation of marginal gains, Brad. Yeah, I mean, the it was poster a- child for <laughs> aggregation of marginal gains. Yeah, you can do better, not because you're worse, but because there was a gap in your knowledge. You know, there was a gap in your knowledge, and it's not knowledge that the system, and I mean that the, the collegiate system, the educational system, that's not structured to give it to you. And that is no, not even a scheme. It's just the absence of any intent to give this to you in any way that's actionable for you at a personal level. You know, it's just incredible to think yeah. about what that means for her. Yeah. And I mean, just what's so interesting about this podcast, right, is we've done, yeah, 620 odd episodes. and. Just something like Sabrina mentioned, episode 16, going way back to house hacking with Chad Carson and just a little thing he mentioned. It was probably, Jonathan, it was probably two minutes, but that changed Sabrina's life because she was then, her aperture was open. She was looking in this case for houses as she walked through town, found a couple that fit and literally purchased one of them. That is remarkable. Actually didn't process that you could still do that now. And I had an interesting story about that. So Brad... I think I've got to go. My daughter has a little singing carols thing today at Aww. her school. So, you know, time is your most precious resource and your kids yep. go use it. Are very this precious. is what we're doing. I'm this is what we're out. here for. But thank you to everyone for letting me come back and share this microphone with Brad today and share your wins and uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. And just look forward to seeing what this community is doing next year. Brad, I'm going to head out the door, but thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And choose about it. Come so subscribe to get on that newsletter and you'll see the written year end wins. We'll see you next year, everyone. The fire is spreading.